Iwe, and good morning. It's great to be in the presence of a God who never changes. We have come to learn that so much changes. There's actually nothing in the world that you can hold, that you can say will remain. But we have a king in the house this morning who never changes. I want to bring us greetings from our bishop and our mom. They're not in today, but they are ministering somewhere within the town. And they know we are here. They are praying for us. My name is Millicent Kaunda. I'm born again. I love the Lord so, so much. And I am married, and I am a mother. Hallelujah. And I want to thank God so, so much for this opportunity, as I also thank uh, our bishop and our mom for giving me this opportunity to bring forth the word of the Lord, the word of this king who never changes. Hallelujah. He is a great God. You can just turn to your neighbor and tell them, I'm so glad you're in the house this morning, even in the tent. I'm so glad you are in the house. Hallelujah. Because we are the remnants that the Lord has allowed to be in the house this morning. I want us to read the scripture from Matthew chapter 4, verses 23 and 25. Matthew 4, 23 to 25. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23 to 25. This is what the Bible says. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments and those who were demon possessed, epileptics and paralytics, and he healed them. Great multitudes followed him from Galilee and from Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond the Jordan. Still in the same chapter, we can look at verse 16 and 17. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Bible says that the people who sat in great darkness have seen the light. And we want to bless God for giving us this opportunity to look at his word this morning. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, throughout, when you read the book of Genesis, when God was creating, the Bible says that he spoke and it became and it is divided in several days. On the first day, he said, let there be light. And there was light. And when evening came, he looked at what he had created. And he said, it is good. The second day came and he created. And then at the end of the day, he said, it is good. And that went on and on until he finished creation. And I normally like saying, by the time he was creating the woman, he looked at her and he said, it is very good. Everything that the Lord created on earth, he looked at it and when he was satisfied that it was functioning, he said, it is good. And about two Wednesdays ago, 
our brother Joe was speaking here and he said something that was very profound. That when God created you and I, he was making an analogy of a phone. When the phone companies normally create something, they ensure that the features they have placed inside that phone are functioning and it's until they have been tested what most of the people in the IT world would call doing a dry run and it is working. Then they put the image on that phone. If it's an iPhone, they will not put that image on that gadget until they have certified that everything is functioning. Then they put their image there because that image is their brand. And so when God created the world, he created you and I, he decided to put an image. Why? Because he knew that every feature that he had put inside of us was functioning. They're being fruitful. They're being able to multiply. They're being able to subdue. They're being able to replenish. They're being able to have dominion was functioning. He tested it and ensured that everything was functioning. No wonder he said, it is good. It is very good. Then he put his image there. And so he created everything and put order. By the time he rested on the seventh day, the world was orderly. Everything was functioning the way he had intended for it to function. And so this morning, I want us to look at a topic called to bring order. Called to bring order. Called to bring order. After God had created everything and it was functioning, the human being was functioning and had the image of God, the world, the, 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 the lights were there. Everything that he needed to be there was functional. And he said it was very good. Something happened in Genesis chapter 3. Something happened in Genesis chapter 3. When the serpent came into the scene. And when the serpent appeared into the scene, he ensured that things got into a place of disorder. At the fall of man, things stopped functioning the way they were meant to function. And immediately the enemy took charge of the world. And that's why the Bible calls him, Jesus is call, calling him the king of the world or the one, the master of the world. You know? Why? Because everything he turned around and he decided he was going to start reigning in the world. And it was why? It was because the man who had been put in the garden to govern it gave over the authority to the enemy. And so the enemy started governing the earth in a disorderly manner. But we want to thank God that God already had a plan in place. And the plan he had was the plan of salvation. He had Jesus who already from the beginning of time, he knew would be sacrificed so that the world would come back to an orderly manner. And so when we get to the book of Genesis, he has already sent, uh, the book of Matthew, he has already sent Jesus to come and bring the world back to order, to come and reconcile man back to God so that man can start having the authority that had already been given to him from the beginning of time. And so he comes as a human being. He comes and he's born of a virgin by the name Mary. And he lived on earth just like you and I lives on earth. He felt hungry like you and I feel hungry. But there is one thing he never did. He never fell into sin. Praise the name of Jesus. He came to bring order. And he lived as a baby. He lived as a teenager. He lived as a youthful person. And by the time he got to the age of 30, he got into doing that which had brought him on earth. And he got baptized. The Bible says he was empowered. Because when he was coming out of the river Jordan, 
The Bible says that the spirit came upon him in form of a dove. And when the spirit rested upon him, the heavens opened and God spoke something. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. God was giving him an affirmation. God was giving him an approval in front of everyone. So that people got to know that this man was not just an ordinary man who had come to be baptized by John the Baptist. But this man had a mission. This man was the son of God and was not only the son of God, but he was the son of God in whom God was well pleased. And so immediately he goes into the wilderness. And he is tempted of the enemy, just like you and I are normally tempted. But he defeated the enemy using the written word of God. And so the portion of scripture that we are reading today is telling us about his ministry. If we can go uh, to verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 23. Chapter 4, verse 23. It says that, Jesus went about all Galilee. In other words, in the entire region of Galilee, there was no place that Jesus did not step. He went about in all Galilee. And what was he doing? He was teaching in their synagogues. He was preaching the good news of the kingdom. And that was not all. He not only stood on those synagogues to preach the gospel, but the Bible says that he healed all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of diseases. Wherever he went, as he preached, he was bringing order. As he healed, he was bringing order. As he raised the dead, he was bringing order. Why? Because when our bodies are sick, our bodies are out of order. When we have sick loved ones, then there is disorder in our families. When you have a sick child, there is disorder in your family. And so Jesus came and everywhere he went, he was doing good. Everywhere he went, he brought order. Everywhere he went, he was casting out demons because wherever demons are, there is disorder. And currently, as we look at the world we are in, it is not the same world. It is not appearing the same as what we read in scripture in the book of Genesis. When we look at it, we can't stand back and say, it is very good. No, it is not good. It is not good. There is so much that is happening in the world we are living in today. And you and I who have been born again are being called to bring order in our world. There is a mandate. You could be going through challenges in life. But the fact that you are born again is reason enough for you to know that you have been called to bring order in your portion of the world. The place where you have influence should be orderly because you live there. Your neighborhood needs to be orderly because you live in that neighborhood. And so Jesus went preaching the good news. And he preached, but it was being accompanied by orderly actions. He preached, it was being accompanied with healing. He preached, it was being accompanied with cleansing. He preached, it was being accompanied with everything that God will look back and say, now it is orderly. Yesterday, after we came from the re-encounter, I happened just to get into the net. And my heart was grieved, so grieved, about a certain music festival. They call it Astro something. I can't even remember what it was being called. Astro something that had been organized by a guy who calls himself Travis Scott. And there, it was full of young people, about 50,000 
of young people had attended that event in Houston. And because of the disorder that the enemy has brought, there came a stampede and eight young people lost their lives because they were going to listen to some secular musician. And as I read on, something caught my attention that all the eight people who died, died of a cardiac arrest. Is it normal? Is it normal that in a crowd, in a church like this, that you'll get several people dying of cardiac arrest? The enemy has brought disorder. There is so much disorder in our society. And I remember I was sharing with some brothers and sisters yesterday that while you're sleeping in the comfort of your houses in the hours of the night, there is a lot of disorder that is happening right in your neighborhood, though we are oblivious of it. A few years ago, as I worshipped him, I remember we decided we were going to go witnessing in the hours of the night. And so we had a Kesha in this place, and when it got to 11 o'clock, we left this place and went to the region called Bez, around Soft Road, around Success. And we were targeting a specific types of people. And when we got there, it didn't look like Zimmerman at all. Those we went with can remember. I remember we were with Kinapasta Kebera. It didn't look like Zimmerman at all. It looked like Sodom and Gomorrah. And it hit my heart that we are sleeping. You are sleeping with your children in your house. And you are imagining everyone else is sleeping. While out there the enemy has brought a lot of disorder. We saw girls at the age of 14, the age of 13, who have decided to become twilight girls. They come when they are dressed decently. But when they get into the scene, I want to call it a scene, uh, a scene, uh, scene, scene or a, a crime scene. When they get into that place, they remove their clothes and remain hardly dressed, very scantily dressed because they are waiting for men who are the age of their fathers and their grandfathers to become clients to them. Now that is the world that God is calling at us out for. You might look at yourself and you tell yourself, but my children are in the house. You might say, but my husband slept beside me last night. That one that is out there could have been your daughter were it not for the grace of God. That man that is out there can as well be your brother or your spouse were it not for the grace of God. And they were not men who are scavenging. No. These were men who are driving heavy vehicles, heavy machines. You could see the Range Rover Sports coming and parking at a place. And they pick these girls and they go behind the kiosk and do whatever they are doing behind the kiosk. That is how much the enemy has degraded us. Hana Heshima Hatakidogo. And the Lord is calling you and I to go and bring order. To go and bring order. Time is up for us to sit down. Time is up for us to think ministry can only be done on this pulpit. Time is up. It's time for us to go out there and bring them to the kingdom. Because even for them, the Lord Jesus Christ died. Wanasifiwe. Even for such a one, the Lord Jesus Christ shed his precious blood. We cannot afford to sit any longer. We cannot afford to continue warming the seats any longer. We cannot afford to sit in our comfort zones anymore. It is time to arise. You do not have to wait until the church has planned for a witnessing season. No, no, no. It is time to arise and tell yourself, I will win one. Perchance I'll make a difference in their lives. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Acts 10, verse 38. 
how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. Mark, he went about healing all. He did not discriminate. He went about healing all. And there when we are starting it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. What has he feeling? Today we can sit here and please tell yourself how God anointed, put your name in there and put where you're coming from. He anointed Jesus of Nazareth. This morning he has anointed who? He has anointed Millicent of my home area of Migori. Tell it to yourself how God anointed who? Don't be afraid. Are you not sure you have been anointed? How God anointed who? From wherever it is. The anointing is not for us to feel good. The anointing is not for us just to speak in tongues in the church and feel good. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. And then he did what? He went about doing good. And he was able to deliver all those people who were oppressed. I want to bring it to us this morning. That the anointing that the Lord has released in your life. That Holy Spirit that he has released in your life. Is not just for you to be kneeling somewhere beside your bed. In the night or in the, in the evening. Whatever time you normally kneel. So that you can speak in tongues. There, It is good when you are speaking in tongues. You are edifying yourself. But after you have edified yourself after you have stirred yourself up it is time to go and heal those who are tormented out there the kingdom is not yet full there is space for one more praise the name of Jesus there is space for one more there is one more who is waiting for you to go and tell them about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you don't go, they will perish. If you don't go, they will perish. Hallelujah. If you don't go, they will perish. Does it matter to you that they perish? Does it matter to you? There is a sick person waiting to receive healing. There is a troubled marriage waiting to be sorted out. There is a child in drug abuse waiting to be delivered. There is that person who is demon possessed. They are waiting to be delivered. And you could be telling or looking at me and saying, Pastor, that is the job of pastors. But I want to tell you something here. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 11. Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 11. He gave some to be apostles, some to be teachers, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors, some to be prophets. Why did he give them? So that they can equip the body of Jesus Christ. You come here every Sunday, every Wednesday. For those who come every Wednesday, why do we come into this place? First and foremost is to celebrate the, the, the doings of the Lord. But the second thing that we come to do is to receive equipping. And we want to thank God for our church. Our bishop has done all that he can do to equip you. And to equip me, what are we being equipped for so that we can go and save a dying world? So that we can go and rescue the perishing. Someone was teaching us something just a few weeks ago. And he said, God himself deposited inside of you and I what we are calling the natural abilities. But as you come in every Sunday, for those number of Sundays you've been coming in, as you have come in, what we, you have been receiving is what we call 
acquired abilities. And so when you put together natural abilities plus acquired abilities, it is equal to competence. So each and every one of you seated here who has been born again, who has been coming into this church for all those number of Sundays, you have the natural abilities, you have the acquired abilities, you are competent enough to win a soul. You are competent enough to cast out a demon. You are competent enough to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. One has if you You are competent. There is no need of being afraid. It is time for you to walk out there and do whatever is required of you to do. You better walk out afraid, but do it anyway because the Lord will be with you. Hallelujah. The Bible says there are people who sat in deep darkness have seen the light. Some of us are coming from homes where there is deep-seated darkness. You look at your brothers. They are in darkness. Some are alcoholics. They are in darknesses. Some of us are coming from neighborhoods that are in deep-seated darknesses. Before you go to bed, all you're hearing are people drinking in the neighborhood pubs. Will they see the light? Will you bring them the light? For this time when we're reading in Matthew chapter 4 verse 16 to 17, it was Jesus who had come into the region making those people see the light. But remember as Jesus came into the world, he introduced himself as the light of the world, but he gets to a point where he's saying that you are the light of the world. So he has ascended, but he is saying, I have left light in so and so. I have left light in my daughter so and so. I have left light in my son so and so. Will your family see the light? Will your neighborhood see the light? Time is up for us to sit down. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 10, verse 7 to 8. This is the time Jesus had already walked with the disciples because something else you need to realize is that Jesus, when he came, he came to model he came to show us the possibilities. He came to make us realize that you can actually cast out a demon and it will go. He came to make us realize that you can actually pray for a sick person and they'll be healed. He came to make us realize that you can actually cleanse a leper and they will be clean. He modeled it for you and I before he went. And so in the process of modeling, he was modeling for the disciples. So verse 7, he says of chapter 10 as you go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand at that time the kingdom of heaven was at hand today as you go you will preach the gospel say the kingdom of heaven is here verse 8 says heal the sick cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out demons for freely you have received freely give realize he's telling them go but as you go preach the gospel but it, it doesn't end there he doesn't does not tell them just preach the gospel and then pack your bags and leave no he is telling them in the process of preaching the gospel because the gospel is power unto salvation because the gospel is power unto healing because the gospel is power unto deliverance this is what i'd want you to do preach the gospel then heal the sick cleanse the lepers raise the dead he is telling them freely i have given you freely one is a 
time is up for us just to tell people that our God is good. Our God is great. But there's nothing to show for it. Time is up. That all you can tell this married woman whose marriage is in turmoil, all you can tell them is that our God is good. Our God is great. How good he, he, is he? How great is he? My marriage is crumbling. Time is up for you to tell this person who has been having diabetes, you're telling them my God is good. You're telling them my God is great. Yet they are still moving back with diabetes. Time is up. The goodness of God must start being manifested. The greatness of God must start being manifested. But it will not just be manifested by the bishop and the pastors. No, this call is for all of us, including the pastors, including the bishops. It is for all of us. As you go, preach that the kingdom of God is here. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse the lepers. You're telling me, but pastor, I am an accountant. Yes, you're an accountant, but a minister in the marketplace. As you balance your books, preach the gospel, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. You're telling me I am a teacher. Yes, as you stand in front of those students, preach the gospel, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. For freely I have given you, freely give. Each one of us has the call. Each one of us has the call. He sent them to the house of Israel in that chapter 10. To the house of Israel. Before he sent the 72 to the Gentiles, he sent the first 12 to the house of Israel. Today we are being sent even among ourselves. Is any of our members unwell? Heal the sick. Is any of our members going through trouble? Get there as a member. The Bible says in everything, give thanks. As the pandemic came, I know we have had to suffer. We have lost loved ones. But there's something that the Lord has taught us in the pandemic. For the longest period possible, we had great teams of men and women who would come into this church. They would stand right in front here and they'd wait for you so that they can lay hands on you. And they did a tremendous job. They were called the ministry teams. And they're still here in our minister as ministry team members. They did a tremendous job. But as the pandemic happened, nobody could lay hands on you. One else was a few. So it got to a time to learn how to pray for yourself. And I want to believe that if you are faithful enough to be praying for yourself, then this call is for you this day. You can be able to preach the gospel. You can be able to heal the sick. You can be able to raise the dead. You can be able to cleanse the lepers. In John chapter 5 verse 20. John 5 20. For the father loves the son and shows him all things that he himself does. And he will show him greater works than this that you may marvel. The world is waiting to marvel. We've gotten to a point where word only will not bring people to the kingdom. Word only. You'll go tell them Jesus is good and they'll ask you how. Where now? It is time for the Father to reveal greater things. That the world in the process of marveling will come after this Jesus that we preach. John chapter 14 verse 12 just winding up John 14 12 most assuredly I say to you 
He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than this, he will do. Because I go to my father. He who believes. Does it say he who is a pastor? No. Does it say he who is a bishop? No. It says he who believes. Do we have believers in the house? Can I see with a show of hands? Hallelujah. He who believes. And so this promise is for each and every person who raised their hands. That greater things than the ones Jesus did shall they do. And when we go to John chapter 20, verse 21. John 20, verse 21. I don't know whether we can get it. John 20, 21. Jesus has just resurrected. And he goes and tells the disciples. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. Mm -hmm. Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. Today I can hear Jesus saying peace to you. As the Father sent me, so send I you. What is he sending you to go and do? He is sending you to go and bring order to a world that is surrounded with sickness. A world that is surrounded with divorce. A world that is currently sur surrounded with mental illness. A world that is surrounded with drug abuse. A world that is surrounded with luck. But he is saying greater things than the ones he did shall you do. Greater things. By virtue of us being sons of God, we have been empowered to do everything. Everything that is great wherever we go. Because we have the DNA of greatness and possibilities. We are being called to operate in the realm of the supernatural. We are being called to operate in the realm of possibilities. We are being called to operate in the realm of abundant life. And Jesus, because of his operations, people started believing in him. The Bible says that multitudes were following him. Wanasifiwe. Multitudes were following him. The Bible says that his fame grew. As we go out there, it is not our fame that will grow. As multitudes start following, it is his fame that will grow. Preach the gospel. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse the lepers. As the Father sent me, so send I you. So send I you. I want us to pray. I don't know what it is that the Father has been commanding you to do. You have heard him in clarity as he has spoken in your spirit over and over again. But you have developed cold feet. You've been wondering, can I be able to do it? Can I be able to do it? You're afraid. Even as I spoke, you're wondering, Pasi, I know. Even at home, God has been commanding you. You're watching me online today. But the Lord has been commanding you to arise in that place of work. There is that person that you've been feeling. If only I could pray for her, maybe Jesus would do something. The Bible says, preach the gospel. Heal the sick. Raise the dead cleanse the lepers. Some of us have been disobedient as Christ has been calling. Some of us are just saying, if I could just be prayed for to gather courage, I will go. If you're there as we are bowing our heads, you feel like going but you are afraid, just rise on your feet. 
rise on your feet. You want to go, but you don't know how to go. You're born again. You don't know how to. You're saying, Lord, I want to obey your command this day. If you're out there in the balcony, in the tent, at the veranda there, inside here, you can just rise on your feet as I make this prayer today. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you so much, my sister. Oh, Rika Shandara Thank you so much. You can join those who are standing. You're not the only one afraid. We are many of us. But Jesus is willing to give us courage. Rabba Shandu Zikete Alabasai. Oh God, we give you praise. Father, in the name of Jesus, look upon my dear sisters and brothers who are standing in response to your call. And Lord, all they are saying is that they are feeling inadequate. Just like Moses felt inadequate and gave excuses. Lord, just like I, at times I also feel so inadequate. We come to you together with them. Lord, I want to pray that you're going to fill us with boldness. That King of Kings, we will be witnesses for you. I pray that Jesus, you're going to release your spirit upon these dear ones today. Like you did that day in the upper room. We pray that you'll release your spirit upon them, oh God. Father, you're the one who gave Peter boldness. Give these dear ones boldness. Give us boldness, O oh God, that we'll be able to preach the good news. We'll be able to heal the sick. We'll be able to raise the dead. It will cast out demons and cleanse lepers. Jehovah God, I pray that you're releasing that power right in their lives this morning. That their lives will no longer be the same. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Maybe you're here to this morning. And deep inside your heart, you have a cry. <laughs> you're saying before you go out there, the doctors have said, I'm ailing. They have said it's a terminal illness. There is nothing terminal to the King of Kings. He is our healer. And he is in the house this morning. If you could just rise on your feet, we will pray for you. We will pray for you. Whatever it is that the doctors have said, thank you, my sister. The doctors have said, you are unwell. Oh, For some, it has been diabetes. For some, it has been hypertension. For some, it's even cancer. But the Lord is saying, heal the sick. So if you could rise on our feet, we will pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, we thank you. Lord, I thank you because there is healing in this house this morning. I thank you because there is not only healing, but the healer is in this house, God. And so, King in glory, we call upon your name for these dear ones who are standing up this morning. The doctors have given them a report, our Father. For some, it's a scan. For some, it's an MRI. For some, it's whatever kind of a report. Father, we are calling upon your name. And Jehovah God, we want to nullify every doctor's report this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, we want to speak of your healing virtue to flow from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. In the name of Jesus Christ, your word tells us that everywhere you went, you did good. And so my father, to, uh, this morning you are here and you're ready to do us good. We decree and declare that as they'll be going back, oh God, to visit their doctors, our father, may the doctors examine them and see 
the, the healer, the great I am, has already moved in their lives and has already performed a healing in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. We receive this healing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we want to thank you and we want to bless you for the power that is found in your word. Jehovah God, we know when we appropriate your word, even to our marriages, things change. Even to our children, things change. And so to, today, my father, this morning, we want to appropriate it, our father, in our homes. And we declare and decree that things are going to be different beginning now because we pray all this. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. May the Lord bless you.